This is Macara Poetry, number seven. Spring is a coming in. To wit, to woo, to wit, to woo. And spring is a coming in, with all her attendant charms and furbelows. The green at her wrist and in her hair, loose belted round her waist, the tendrils curling into words, the growing script across the slate blue flagstones. Her breath blowing away winter hoarfrost, her touch thaws the ground, drawing up the purple crocus and the drooping heads of snowbells littering the lawns newly greened. The wettest march in memory, yes, soaked to the skin we were, as we walked from school, the last blast of winter biting at our heels, the trees upturned in the street. It was a lover and his in the springtime. And spring says, come and lie with me and watch the pink cloud tree explode again like last year while you cradled the book and volume of his brain in your hands. When hearts burst and the grounds were well watered, her breath was a welcome respite, wreathing itself round, a relief after the hard cold freezing our pipes, chapping our fingers, the slogging through snow, her breath a kiss upon our brow. The Coach Painter. Paint pots of red and gilt in Barbados, Bridgetown it was, where the conflagration rose up, and the carriage for the governor only half complete, the coat of arms of bare tracing, when an errant spark fell upon those rags, long forgotten, and, as the birds cried out their evening song, the smoldering grew to flame, the glass panes, carefully leaded, carried from England, blackened and cracked, the lion and the unicorn rampant no more, but charred to dust. The billowing smoke seen beyond the green of cane fields, an ill omen indeed in this coastal town, the sails of tall schooners swaying on the water, moored to this island of coral limestone. His cat run into the cotton at the first sign of smoke. The sun rises again, and he too to survey the damage. The salvage starts, building up again from the earth, this painter of coaches. Manhattan, evening. Let me float in my lover's arms. Sure, what harm in it to fox trot down lover's lane? No harm indeed, if honestly meant. That kiss or two in the twilight, beneath electric lights wired and rewired patiently. I just knew you would kiss like that, as the sky was riven in two. From mid-century on, and the city would be a fine place if they would ever finish building it, the sun rising and setting on the gatekeepers with their coffee and meetings and profit and law statements, the price of paper and ink, the printer in Pennsylvania, then Vermont, then India, now China. How soon before we are all remaindered? And still she floats in her lover's arms, the lucky coin in her shoe, thin silver under her heel. A lecture on Tintoretto. Throwing off the old cloak of melancholy, shaking away the raindrops dripping from the tip of an umbrella puddling down to our feet. As the lecture on Tintoretto starts, the room darkens and the slides drop in their carousel. The click, click, ticking away the next 50 minutes or so. Later, watching as starving cattle, seven in number, totter away. Seven glossy fat take their place, grazing in the long grass. Putting on new clothes, radiant in your reflection, sighing always at the colors mixed perfectly so. The iris a palette of blue, 
gold, brown. Partly because she loves him. Partly because she loves him, she holds her tongue as she watches two geese honking northwards past Fleetwood Station and wishes he would clasp her hand again in his, warming it, this chill spring evening as another train glides south. The rectangles of light punctuated by the visages of travelers trying to reach their own ends, folding and unfolding their newspapers, grappling with glossy magazines. And she, she nurses an ache, a knot so thick corded to her middle, it never will be born. Her phantom child, a second self, her love, her lost one, cherished for so long, so well, it is nearly named, but yet a chimera, glistering in the dark, then gone. On the road home, how soon before they would shift back to their familiar shapes, the carrion crow, the cat, the snake writhing around the stump of a tree he had hoped to safely sleep beside until the dawn, broken like the shell of an egg held in her hand, cracked against the rim of a teacup, the kettle singing atop the fire. Now this whirlwind of flesh about his head, and he only wanting to be home in his own bed, unmolested by spirits, his wife whispering, telling her beads, ten by ten, ivory white, her hands in his later, murmuring a morning prayer, her lips pressed to his. History unraveling. That history unraveling from the edges of the tapestry unweaving each day a little more the scenes of unicorns recumbent fading from view as he turns to her with quizzical looks and the riddle of his fingers spanning round her waist. The cloisters in dark November tracing the face of the woman, stone hewn. Riddle me, riddle me, Randy Rowe. My father gave me seed to sow. They bloom now in spring, so many seasons later. Sleeping, have they been sleeping? these many years, a long hibernation of sorts, bursting forth only now. Their histories writ upon their petals, florid and pale by turns. Until the last ember of the sun. Until the last ember of the sun falls through the firmament, a small beacon in all that black, she will wait in her shift, counting the leaves as they grow, finely veined, semi-transparent on the tree, that brushes her window pane with an errant branch, a tapping finger, as if to say, yes, you are still here, in spite of all the contradictions served up cold on a plate like last night's dinner. Smiling all the while at the passing scene, how can she not? untangling the knots the wind wove in her hair, counting the ants as they make their hoardings for winter, her heart's larder already full of apples, sweets, preserves, all there for the tasting. Well, thank you again for joining me, and I hope to be speaking to you again soon. Until then, Take care, goodbye, and God bless.